Hello, and thanks for joining the LNG Canada Project's 2021 Community Update. I'm Peter Zebedee, LNG Canada's Chief Executive Officer, and I'm speaking to you here today from my home base in Vancouver on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. Over the next half hour, we'll share with you the progress we've been making at our construction site in Kitimat on the traditional territory of the Heisla Nation. We'll describe our efforts to deliver meaningful, lasting opportunities and benefits to local and Indigenous communities in the Terrace and Kitimat region. And we'll look at what's to come for the rest of this year and beyond as we work to complete our project and prepare to ship our first cargo of made in BC, low carbon liquefied natural gas. Needless to say, the past year and a half has been challenging for everyone. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact how we work on our project and how we engage with communities and organize events. While we can't meet in person, we can take you to our construction site in Kitimat, virtually at least, and introduce you to some of the individuals who are helping to get the job done safely and with the community's interests top of mind. I think you'll be pretty amazed at the progress we've made and the milestones that we've reached. Things look much different at the site as they did one year ago. What hasn't changed and what will never change is our commitment to health and safety on and off our job site. Safety is our top priority. It informs everything that we do. Every day, construction teams across our project hold safety meetings before they start their shifts. These meetings, also known as toolbox talks, are an opportunity for the individuals building our project to share safety experiences and insights relating to their work. Toolbox meetings are just one way that safety matters are communicated and reinforced. We continue to share important information about COVID-19 with our workforce and we constantly reinforce mandatory steps to reduce transmission of the virus. All of this is in service of reinforcing our commitment to protecting our people, community and our project. We include specific details about our COVID-19 response on the LNG Canada website along with other project information and videos to describe what we've been doing. I encourage you to have a look. The address is lngcanada.ca. And now I'd like to provide you with a quick snapshot of our site in Kitimat and an overview of some of the highlights from the past year. Hello everyone, my name is Vince Kenny. The past 15 months has been a challenging time for all of us. But as the construction general manager of the project here at site, I cannot be prouder of our team's resilience and what we've been able to accomplish in Kitimat. For a good part of last year and up until now, our priority has been to minimize any risks of COVID transmission on site and in the community while delivering the critical works like dredging, driving piles, LNG tank construction, habitat offsets, installing concrete foundations and underground piping. As you can imagine, this is no small feat. We are delivering a world-class project with the lowest CO2 emissions of any large-scale LNG export facility currently operating anywhere in the world today. What now lies ahead is the going vertical phase with multiple scopes of work which must be integrated safely and flawlessly. Here in Kidimat, our prime contractor, JGC Fluor, is responsible for building the main part of the LNG Canada plant. Later on in this program, my colleague from JGC Fluor will give you an update of how we are progressing on that front, as well as more details on how we are responding to COVID-19 at site. 
Alongside JGC Fluor, the LNG Canada team is responsible for building a new terminal for Rio Tinto, the dredging works, marine habitat offsets, and some site clearing activities. At the same time, TC Energy is building and will operate the 670 km coastal gasling pipeline that runs from Dawson Creek to Kitimat, and BC Hydro will be providing hydroelectric power to the project. On the water, LNG Canada took the lead to dredge the harbour and build a new wharf in the vicinity of Rio Tento and the former Methanex and Uracan wharfs. I am proud to inform that our contractor Boscalis has completed their third and last dredging season in February this year. The dredging works has increased the depth of the berthing areas in the port of Kidimat, which will allow safe mooring and passage of the LNG carriers and other vessels. Nearer to the shore of Hospital Beach, we are progressing with the construction of Terminal A. We expect to conclude the overall pile driving activity in June and place the last concrete deck in early summer. Our aim is to fully complete Terminal A by the end of the year, where we will hand it over to Rio Tinto. But as we progress, we ask that the community members refrain from entering the tidal flats at the hospital beach for your personal safety. Both Anderson Creek Fish Ladder and the Hospital Beach Salt Marsh are now in effectiveness monitoring stages and we continue to assess their performance in habitat enhancement, making modifications to optimise if and when required. Earlier this year we completed the site prep required for the two new salt marshes at Minette Bay after completing the large woody debris removal below the tree line last year. We removed over 6,000 tonnes of washed up timber and deadfall, exposing more footprint of the existing salt marshes. With the completion of the site prep at Minette Bay, we have started our planting stage in April 2021, where we recently added close to 200,000 sedge grass seedlings. We will return again in the fall to continue infilling seedlings. Hello. I am Ian Swambeck. I am the JFJV Deputy Construction Manager on the LNG Canada project. I'd like to give you a brief update with where we are regarding our construction progress. Like many other industries, since March of 2020, we faced unanticipated challenges. However, we've accomplished many of our planned milestones thanks to the dedication and resilience of our workforce. Some of our accomplishments include the completion of our Phase 1 site prep, beginning of the LNG storage tank construction and completing of our construction site bund wall, the start of our river water intake structure, and the construction of our Anderson Creek and Moore Creek bridges. We also completed the construction of our module haul road and we occupied our Cedar Valley Workforce Accommodation Center. We have completed the material offloading facility and then finally, we completed just recently our plant piling program. Much of this work was done during the COVID pandemic, meaning our site had to quickly adapt to COVID protocols. Hello, I'm Bernie Moltz. I'm the construction director for JGC Floor on the LNG Canada project. 2020 has been an unprecedented year for everyone. The entire world had to adjust to life amidst the uncertainties of COVID-19. And things were no different here in Kitimat. For those of us working on the LNG Canada project, our number one priority has always been the safety of our workforce and community. Along with LNG Canada, we activated the Unified Incident Management Team, IMT, March 14th, 2020, to ensure an aligned and timely response. The IMT took direction for the work, closely aligned with Northern Health to make sure we were following the most up-to-date guidelines. We've enacted a number of protocols to provide as safe an environment as possible. From the Cedar Valley Lodge to the job site to the office trailers, we've set high expectations for our workforce to keep people healthy and employed. Some of the protocols we've implemented include COVID pre-screening for all employees arriving at site and regularly testing of our local staff, a daily self-assessment that's required for everyone before they come to work, Northern Health Directed Vaccine Program, mandatory face coverings required indoors at all times and outdoors when two meter distancing is impossible. We've installed HEPA filters on our buses and they're also sanitized regularly. We've kept our workforce out of the local communities except when absolutely necessary and we hold all meetings virtually like this one. We also made sure that protocols were followed at our Cedar Valley Lodge, our workforce accommodation, in addition to our site requirements. We implemented pre-check-in temperature checks mandatory hand sanitizing entering the dining areas, reduced and modified dining seating arrangements, 
pre-registering for any exercise equipment and health and fitness exercise pods. As always, we are committed to keeping our people and host communities safe and healthy. Thank you for your ongoing support. We appreciate our workforce and their ability to get the job done while adhering to COVID-19 restrictions, while still abiding by our site safety standards. We have accomplished a lot in 2021 already and we have much more to go. Some of the milestones slated to be completed this year include receiving our first module, delivery of our first electrical substation, completion of our creek and diversion scope, raising and installing the roof of the LNG storage tank, the completion of the south portion of the environmental offsets. I'd like to thank everyone who's worked on and continues to work on this project. Your dedication, flexibility, and work ethic have made it possible for the project to move forward during uncertain times. Once again, thank you. I'm excited about what we'll achieve this year. Hi everyone, my name is Nina Arvanitidis and I am LNG Canada's social performance and local content lead. I'd like to tell you a bit more about what social performance and local content are all about at LNG Canada. First, we place a priority on managing the impacts of our business activities on surrounding communities. This includes things like housing non-local workers at our on-site workforce accommodations, Cedar Valley Lodge, providing health services for the workforce at our project site, and using personnel shuttle buses to minimize the increase in road traffic. We also work hard to realize direct economic benefits or local content through a local hire first policy that focuses on indigenous, local, and BC employment and supply chain opportunities. This includes workforce development and training programs. A third aspect is our community investment program, addressing key pillars of community wellness, education, environment, workforce and enterprise development. All of these activities are underpinned by regular community and Indigenous engagement through specific platforms, meeting with key stakeholders and First Nations, events or community feedback process, and various digital channels. In 2020, we made some necessary changes to our engagement efforts to keep everyone safe and to comply with COVID-19 public health orders. This meant putting a pause on the face-to-face -face gatherings we would normally hold. We were able to transition many of our engagements to a virtual setting, including our regular meetings with First Nations representatives, municipalities, our social management roundtable, as well as our environment forum. In place of a traditional open house event, we are providing this virtual community update today. We're thankful for the support and cooperation we've received, and we are really looking forward to being able to see everyone in person again soon. LNG Canada is proud of the direct benefits that have been achieved through our local content initiatives. We continue to see strong participation of local residents, Indigenous groups, and women in our Kitimat construction workforce. And as of March 2021, over $3.2 billion in project contracts and procurement has gone to local Indigenous and BC companies. We have provided over $4 million of funding towards workforce development initiatives benefiting British Columbians to help meet industry skilled trades requirements. I'd like to highlight three initiatives that are currently running. First, the Trades Training Fund, a program that supports BC employers and students to advance apprentice development. Over 1,300 BC apprentices have gone through the program to date. Connect an employment placement program that's based in Terrace to remove barriers and connect Northwest BC residents with jobs in the construction sector. Over 350 individuals have been placed to date. And finally, Your Place, an orientation program that encourages BC women to consider a career in trades and to work on our project. 48 women have graduated to date. Last but not least is our community investment program. Communities and residents in the Northwest are the key beneficiaries for our programs and projects funded through community investment efforts. We hope our funding eases some challenges while also creating new opportunity. Since 2014, we've contributed over $6 million to programs benefiting Kitimat, Terrace, and First Nation communities in British Columbia. Some of our examples include subsidized costs for the District of Kitimat Summer Camp, operational support, for the cornerstone homeless prevention services provided by Tamatic Status of Women and the Kitimat CDC. 
a $500,000 contribution to Terrace Fire Department towards an emergency response vehicle to meet Highway 37 road traffic needs, and a multi-year partnership with INSPIRE, benefiting Indigenous students and educators with bursaries and professional development opportunities. With the rest of the world, we shifted our focus in 2020 to provide funding to relieve some of the added pressure of COVID-19 on local organizations, including a $250,000 contribution to Northern Health to support diagnostic and care needs in the region, as well as a more recent donation to Northern Health to support purchase of vaccine freezers. Other examples of COVID relief include the donation of 100 new laptops to the Coast Mountain School District 82 to support student access to virtual learning, PPE for care workers with Terrace and District Community Services Society, and several food security initiatives, including efforts to expand and adapt the Kassan Society Community Garden and Food Share Program in Terrace, and funding for good food box programs in First Nations communities. We're looking forward to continuing to work with organizations in the region and seeing what we can accomplish in 2021 and beyond. At LNG Canada, we want to leave the communities that we live and work in better than when we got here. When COVID happened, immediately we did things like provided food security for some of the nonprofit organizations and the food banks. We did a donation matching with our employees. We donated $250,000 just to Northern Health. The global pandemic descended upon our community and LNG Canada was able to provide us with the resources to ensure that we had PPE to meet worst case scenarios. We'd like to thank LNG Canada for sponsoring our summer program here at River Lodge and allowing some of the kids in our community that are not able financially to take part. This project's huge for Heisla. Our language program, we're given a lot of financial help and it's really amazing to listen to my grandchildren speak in our language. First of all, they've provided $500,000 towards the construction and also the uh, $200,000 towards the training. We will have probably 20 new care aides in the community. My role is to create opportunities for people to learn about Heisla. Because of the local agreements with LNG Canada, Heisla Nation Council has programs like mine, which never existed before. Having a new rescue truck from LNG Canada means a lot to the community. This truck actually is gonna to respond anywhere in the north. That's a huge impact. LNG Canada provided us with lots of supplies and materials for growing garden boxes and funds to provide water supply for our food security gardens. There's tons of opportunity here in the project, you know, get trained on things that you could use after the project's over. Thank God that something's going to happen for our children and our grandchildren. The funding that LNG provided, the Good Food Box program, is going to supplement our gift cards for prenatal and postnatal Heisler families. We distributed 350 devices to students during the pandemic. LNG Canada donated 100 of those laptops. LNG Canada has donated both monetarily and with physical donations. Canada has really increased our capacity to serve. Rather than telling us what we needed, they asked us because they realized that we're the experts on ourselves, we're the experts within our community. Big companies don't always go local. We're building the whole community. It's not just building jobs and then leaving. For generations to come, there will be jobs and opportunities. Our community is growing. Our schools are seeing new faces. Businesses are growing. New businesses are opening. To see this growth in our community is fantastic. My name is Ryan Frank. I work with JGC Fleur. I am the local content and Indigenous relations lead. The procurement process is it's fairly rigorous. Uh, we, we go through and evaluate every company based on uh, health and safety, uh, capacity, uh, quality and financial ability. Uh, once they can make it through those uh, evaluation, well then they still have to put a very uh, highly technical and uh, competitive bid in just to, to rise above the others. So safety is not compromised here. I mean, uh, this, is, this is the safest project on earth, as they say, as we say. So if a company is coming in with a poor safety record, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work with, with us. So if you're looking to find opportunities on the project here, you can go to our website. So it's jfjvkitimat.com 
And at the top of the page, you'll see an opportunities tab. And underneath there, there's uh, contracts. And once you're there, you can see a list of upcoming contracts. So all those are the ones that are gonna be going out for bid. And then you also see contracts awarded. So those are gonna be a list of all the contracts that have been awarded since the beginning of the project. So back to 2018, lots of listings, lots of contracts there. There is preferential hiring for job opportunities. So whether you're a union or not union, there's a project labor agreement for the union positions and it's prioritized by, the, by the, the local area. So this is on the traditional territory of the Heisla First Nation, so Heisla members do get the, the top priority when they're in hiring, followed by their spouses. Uh, and then local area First Nations, all the re remainder. So that's uh, Kitsum Kalum, Kitsilis, Gitgat, Kithala, Metlakatla, and Lakvalams. And then local area residents, they're all at that same level as well. So if you're from Kitimat or from Terrace, then you're on that level as well. And after that, it's BC, then Canada. So if you're looking for job opportunities on the project, same thing, you have to go to the website, jfjvkitimat.com. On the top of the page, you'll see opportunities and a bunch of options come down. One of them is careers. Click on careers, it'll immediately go to a listing of all the jobs that are available, not only from JGC Fleur, but also from all of our subcontractors as well. You can search by keyword. There are lots of pages, so there's lots of opportunities, so definitely go there. From like laborers to, to equipment operators, tradespeople like pipe fitters, there's gonna be a big one. Scaffolders is gonna be huge, as you know, like the, we have modules coming in here and they're massive, like three, four stories high. So and they all need scaffolding around them. And then of course there's non-trade uh, jobs as well. So you'll have like data entry, You'll have uh, project coordinators, uh, all sorts of things on the administrative side as well. So there are different organizations uh, around the communities here that are helping. We are doing some work directly. We are helping to arrange a boot camp. So it's basically a construction readiness program and that's open to everyone around the province. So you can email us at info at jfjvkitimat.com with questions about that boot camp. Also, if you have any question about the project, anything around the jobs, the contracting, anything you wanna know about the project, email us at that, at that address, info at jfjvkitimat.com. As you've seen, we've been working hard at building our project, always with safety top of mind. And we continue to focus on meeting our commitments in the community, supporting local initiatives, and building and maintaining relationships. I'm proud of the efforts we've made to help workers and communities meet specific challenges and find solutions together. We appreciate your support and interest, and we never take that for granted. This is a big, complex project, and we couldn't accomplish our goals and meet our objectives without your involvement. Please watch for more announcements and details about our work, both at the site and in the community, by visiting lngcanada.ca and by following us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You can also contact our engineering procurement and construction contractor, JGC Floor, at the phone number or email on your screen for any project questions you may have. On behalf of the entire LNG Canada team, thank you again for watching.